So, hi all, my name is George Vardakis, and um, together with uh, Nestor Azdukos, we implemented GSOP uh, for the ESA SDR Makerspace project. Now, GSOP is uh, a radio module uh, for interfacing with software-defined radio devices. Uh, so today I'm going to speak to you a bit about our motivation behind uh, this project, uh, a small introduction to SOPI SDR and GSOP, some of the features um, of our module, um, how we maintain and extend GSOP, and uh, a conclusion. So uh, today there is uh, a, an abundance of software-defined radio devices in the market. Uh, and uh, as uh, time goes by, even more um, are being introduced. Now, the way to use these devices from um, in the context of uh, new radio um, is either if uh, these devices have their own new radio blocks, like for example the the Lime suit, the Lime, the Lime um, SDR or the Bluetooth SDR, uh, as you can see here, uh, dedicated blocks. Um, or the, the other option is to use uh, generic radio blocks like the GR Osmocom. Uh, now, the, the issue with uh, the first option of having dedicated blocks uh, is that, okay, th they are extremely useful when um, you know the device pretty well and know very well how to configure it, because if you, if you are for example, um, a, a new user of, of such a device, um, they're, they're, they may be a bit hard to configure because there's uh, there's a lot of uh, provided uh, parameters. So uh, easily there, there can be misconfigurations. Uh, or for example, when you need to have multiple uh, SDR devices inside the same flow graph, uh, there you will need to install multiple uh, can radio out of three modules in order to support uh, dedicated uh, blocks. And for the other option of having a generic block, uh, although it's much easier to be handled, uh, it can have issues like, uh, for example, um, being harder to add a new device, to uh, being harder to, to use a new device um, because the, the vendors will have the vendor uh, would have to go and uh, write the corresponding code for their hardware, and uh, this should be integrated inside the the, the Osmo the Osmocom um, module, for example. Um, yeah, uh, so some of these issues uh, are uh, being solved by Sopi. Uh, Sopi is an open source uh, Sopi is the is an open source project. Uh, which um, is used to interface with software-defined radio devices. Now, SOAP follows a plugin architecture. So what it does is that the, the main module um, expo has a, um, exposes some an API, an abstract API, and uh, whoever wants to introduce a new, uh, soft, a new SDR, a new hardware, uh, they just go and um, um, implement these uh, abstract functions, and then their device can be uh, can be used uh, immediately. So, as you understand, this uh, reduces the time to market uh, extremely, and uh, it it offers some nice features, like, for example, uh, remote access to to software defined radio devices. Now, GSOP is uh, an out of three uh, module of GNU Radio, at least it was when we started implementing it. Um, and basically, it is a wrapper for, for the SOP SDR. What it does is that uh, it, um, it provides a source and sync blocks, which um, can be used in order to, to interface with uh, multiple, um, multiple devices, different devices um, and uh, these uh, these blocks they are written in YAML as all the radio blocks are 
um, are written in. And uh, it also allows us to uh, do some nice tricks, like for example, uh, have dynamic fields for for a number of the, um, of the very popular devices that are supported. Um, um, each time you choose a different SDR, uh, some other parameters appear because um, some parameters differ between uh, SDR devices. And uh, some of the some of the options, some of the parameters that uh, are offered uh, from the GSOP module are shown here. Basically, the 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 uh, format of uh, the UHD source and sync blocks uh, was followed with um, a general uh, options uh, tab and an RF options tab uh, for the RF specific uh, parameters. And uh, as uh, I will show you here, this is the, the generic JSOP um, uh, tab where you can see uh, some parameters, uh, some general parameters like, for example, uh, the output type or the device type. And this is a drop down menu from where you can either choose um, a specific, uh, some of the SDR devices that, uh, whose support is um, integrated in the module. Uh, so for, for some uh, widely used devices, there is uh, integrated support, or you can uh, use a custom, uh, as we say, driver, when, for example, there is a, a new device uh, or a device that isn't directly, uh, that doesn't exist in the in the drop down and um, some other fields that uh, the users can uh, fill in over here like uh, various uh, arguments so when um, there is a new drive a new device for example um, and uh, there are there are some parameters that do not appear in the GSC block someone can very easily uh, configure them through uh, string uh, arguments um, and over here we have the, the RF tab, where are the, the RF parameters and um, some, some frequency, the, the setting the frequency, the gains, uh, antennas, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I will show you another, um, the case where, for example, we have chosen a specific SDR device like the AirSpy over here, as you can see the device type. And um, what, what happens here is that if I go to the RF tab, you can see that in the gain mode, um, there, are, there are three gains available to set because each device um, has um, a different, uh, different levels of gain that you can set. And uh, these are exposed by the GNU radio uh, block for some devices, uh, of course, for some of the mostly used uh, devices, we have exposed exactly the, um, uh, the gain values, so the user can just uh, set uh, what they want. Or the other option is to use um, a global, a, a, generic, a generic value, uh, which uses some algorithm uh, from the driver in order to set all these gains automatically. Um, so, basically, the the most uh, the, the basic advantages of uh, of using SOPI uh, are mainly the the ability to add new devices uh, very easily, um, and uh, this this means that uh, as soon as um, a vendor implements the module, the SOPI SDR module for their device. Uh, they can uh, extremely uh, easy, extremely easily uh, publish it, and um, this way the, um, the hardware can uh, very um, fast. It, it can be used really, really fast, and uh, it's it's also very easy to write a module, and uh, also it's very easy to implement uh, to introduce uh, new API functions it's inside the main. So PSDR um, the project in case, for example, a new device has uh, some new feature that isn't uh, already supported. Uh, so all these make um, adding a new device very easy. 
and um, also the um, the way that the YAML file for the GRC blocks is constructed makes it very easy uh, for new devices to um, to be introduced. And uh, another very big um, advantage is uh, that it's quite easy to to maintain because now each vendor uh, when they implement uh, their their module for for the SOFI for their device, they are um, responsible for uh, maintaining it and uh, correcting issues. Um, and this way, they they don't need to, for example, uh, watch over a whole project, uh, which includes all devices uh, possible. Um, so th this makes it quite much easier to, to maintain. Uh, yeah, so for a conclusion, if uh, someone asked why to, why to use GSOP, um, I would say, first and foremost, uh, if you want to be cutting edge, then um, this, uh, this can help you be, because um, any new device can be, can be really fast be used um, when it goes into market. Um, um, of course, it is easily maintainable and expandable, as we said, and it's a very active project, which um, helps in reducing the time that is needed to fix issues and uh, bugs and whatever. Um, and also, it is uh, since version 3.9 uh, of new radio, it is uh, it's it's. It's in it's in three. It's part of the radio project um, since version 3.9, and it is also used by tens of, uh, if not hundreds, of uh, Satnox stations, uh, ground stations around the world. So any any issues that uh, there might uh, there might be, they appear really fast and um, fixed also very fast. Of course, uh, there are uh, there are issues like any project. Um, the the YAML file for the source and sync blocks uh, is quite enormous, so it um, may be a bit scary for someone who goes and sees it for the first time and maybe wants to uh, to add something. Um, and uh, yeah, th this might. Uh, Cause um, you know uh, bugs to be introduced more easily, but um, okay, uh, it's not uh, it's not so bad, and uh, yeah, that's what we have and we're working with. Thank you. Thanks, George. Uh, let's see if there, uh, we have any any questions. So Frank asks, what are the possibilities of uh, using SOPI outside GNU Radio? Oh, um, SOPI was initially, was I mean, it was a project uh, outside of, of GNU Radio. Uh, it's, it's, there, there is a, a software suite, um, which is uh, maintained by the SOAP SDR uh, guys. And um, you can do things like, I mean, you can use it and uh, uh, like uh, capture samples um, or uh, see the the available hardware that you have on on your host uh, and uh, yeah uh, you can do pretty much uh, anything uh, through using this this sheet. So uh, we came later uh, and we we built the wrapper. Uh, the tools were already there to use the soap. And my only side that uh, this is also used in both of both of SDR. Cool. Um, unless there are any other questions, I think we can move to our next. Can I ask something? Yeah, yeah sure. So. Um... George, uh, what would you propose uh, to the SOPI API or the GNU Radio API 
in order to help uh, modules uh, like uh, like this uh, and to be more um, parameterizable, let's say, or dynamically to switch uh, uh, and uh, retrieve uh, the uh, the capabilities of the SDR. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I guess um, you are referring to the, the problem that I mentioned uh, at the end with the YAML, uh, the YAML files, which really can uh, grow very big uh, and ugly. Uh, and uh, yeah, of course, the XML before was even worse. So it, it is a step forward, the YAML. But uh, I think that uh, if, if we could find a way um, to use another language uh, uh, for the for the blocks, or at least to be easier to use. Uh, for example, the what we do right now inside the GRC blocks is that we try to write Python um, and run some um, some checks. Um, uh, for example, for the the parameters to be inside certain ranges and stuff like that, and we try to do it. Through Python, but um, we it really took us a lot of time to figure out how to write Python uh, inside there, and it's a very hacky way how we do it. So, yeah, maybe um, a way to to run, for example, scripted languages like Python. Uh, I don't know inside the blocks, it would be really helpful. Or at, or a, another language uh, altogether. I mean, yeah. Uh, we have a question about the uh, support of Vita forty nine uh, also on uh, Shopee. B forty nine. Vita Vita forty nine. Uh, what is that? I'm I'm not aware of that. It's the IQ standard for. No, there is no support uh, for such, no, I don't think so. such a standard. Yeah, it, it will be super interesting indeed. And as Derek uh, says that uh, in the Lunedi conference there will be a special uh, issue for this. Cool. And with that, I think we can move on to our next presentation, which is by Manolis Surlikas on GRCCSDS. So Manolis. Uh, while really you're switching, can I say something quickly? Oh, uh, yes, we still have time for that. Yes. Great. I just wanted to, uh, as one of the GNU Radio leads and president, make a particular thank you <laughs> for developing GR SOPI. Uh, it's one of the most valuable contributions that we've received in the last year. And we're already seeing a lot of people getting quite a bit of use out of this. So uh, you've developed some great software, and it's definitely going to be very valuable in the future. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> that that was our goal. That was our goal to to make it as uh, as easy as possible. Yeah, uh, it's definitely filled a gap in in what was available before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Thanks. may I add one? May I add one quick comment, please? Sure. Yes, the th George. Thank you for the excellent presentation. I want to uh, reiterate. Uh, uh, what I think has been already expressed, which is the need to support Vita 49, because uh, Vita 49 is a standard which has been used across the world now for transport of IQ, et cetera, uh, in an encapsulated form that allows you to drag along a lot of the parameters in the SDR system, and it's in widespread use. And Flex Radio adopted it early in the Flex 6000 series, and also modified the Vita 49 standard to enable control. So I think this would be a great place for those of us in the GNU radio community to do something that would be very useful. Not that Vita 49 hasn't been used because Edis used it in the uh, the uh, SDR hardware. So I, I think it's a thing should be considered. <laughs> 